cognizant of looking, and obviously the coach helped us out there, uh, letting us know there was subs. Uh, always make it a good habit, especially if I'm the away official, like in that case, if I was working in Brian's spot, I'm always gonna sneak a peek up to that table. Even on our, you know, D3, Juco games, it doesn't matter. Those table, the table crew may miss that a sub came up there late, and we never want to avoid giving the coach the opportunity to put a sub in the game. They're putting that sub in for a reason. We sure don't want to miss that opportunity. on the trail end shot, look back at that three point attempt. So the shot's going up outside the three point, you mark it, but look what you're positioning as a trail. You were actually farther on the court than the player was that was taking the shot. So I'd like, you, I'd like to see you when the ball's on your side of the court, I'd like to see you sticking a little bit closer to that sideline. I'm gonna mention that to you right now. You want to be looking through him for that. You know, Mark talked a little bit yesterday when we were going through mechanics. We were talking about home base. Bryant, much better. Much better being towards that sideline. The ball's on your side. You've got players right there. If you're in, if you're on the court, that three or four steps, almost to that three-point line extended. You're taking away some very, very um, good vision to potentially catch a foul or a violation even. Good call, Fritz, good call. Hand on that stays on, it's one of our four automatics, correct? Definitely C's call, it was C's primary, other side of the, it wasn't a drive down the lane, it was just a shot, so we, re, uh, we revert back to our, our basic primary coverage areas. Nate, Nate, hand up high, when you got subs, get your hand up here. Down here, they may not see it. Get your hand up here. I was just talking to Nate about that subs. He had subs, and he was his hand was like down here. Well, if I'm the lead, I may be looking through players and not see that. Get your hand up. Officiate tall. at this last play down here, ball's coming down here, and I know if you'll see me on the video, I'm on this end. But Bryant, you were in here almost in that close down position. Stay wide until that ball, there you go, good. Much better. Look how you were standing right here, look at your vision right there. You had the whole thing in, within your uh, um, angle of vision. Sorry, stumbling on my words a bit. 
sure how good we'll be able to see that on the video. So the player dribbles around the baseline, beats a primary defender, there's a secondary defender right there, and I'm not sure if you can replay that on the video and what kind of angle you're going to have from where the camera is. I'm not so sure that there was a foul there. The defender is allowed verticality, correct? There was definitely contact, but look where the ball handler dribbler was coming from. They dribbled below their primary defender, they came from behind the basket, so they obviously had to be leaning in to create a shot. In my opinion, I think that offense created all that contact, and it's going to have to be, the defender almost is going to have to like whack them or something big. Because if you got your, ooh, if you got your, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He slipped and smacked his foot. Looks like his old player kind of followed him on that. No, he just, just he just slipped on the floor. He slipped and when he went down, his okay, face okay. smacked the floor. Uh, all right. Hopefully that's not a sign of the day to come. It just he slipped on the floor. Hopefully it was just some sweat and it we were not gonna have an issue with humidity. That player just basically just slipped on the floor and then when he went down his face just face planted right in the floor. So hopefully he's okay. Um, yeah, but going back to that play there, if, uh, if the ball handler gets themselves pinned behind the basket and they're trying to create space to give themselves a shot, you know, we don't want to bail him out for, bail the ball handler out for getting themselves pinned behind the basket. So it's got to be like a super obvious foul by the defense that for us to call that. Brian, look where you are again. You are actually in, you were on that red line. Your three point shooter, which I don't know if Fritz picked up or not, I wasn't watching, I was watching you. Three point shooter is obviously outside the three point arc because they're a three point shooter and you're on the red line. So we need to work real hard about not getting too far out onto the court. We'll talk about that at halftime. <laughs> Guys looking good. Brian, I think, you know, from the standpoint of what we're calling so far in this game, I think we're calling a good game. Our foul selection for the most part is pretty good. 
Bryant, there's the one I talked about with the, and we're going to talk about that at halftime with the player, with the offense creating contact coming from behind the backboard. Um, but no, we're looking good. Um, some positional things that we're going to again talk about at halftime and hopefully adjust for the second half. Um, Nate, definitely, Pam mentioned it. You're, you look way more confident today than you did yesterday. So some of the stuff that you were processing yesterday, I um, mean, it's sinking in. You're, you're, you're looking more comfortable. There we go. Good job. Bryant, blow the whistle and then get rid of it. I think you keep that whistle in your mouth too long. Again, th that's a, it's, it's me. But if I crack the whistle, I'm going to hit the whistle, and then I'm spitting out, and I'm yelling at my partners what I got. So they, they will know within the first couple minutes or whatever it takes for me to call a foul or two in the game, my partners will know that they're going to hear me. They're going to hear my whistle. They're going to hear my voice. That allows them to do whatever they need to do. So instill that. Get, get rid of that whistle. Okay, Brian, if you look at this tape right now, look where Fritz is. Ball hit coming his side, Fritz is on this sideline. We need to stay on that sideline to give ourselves that vision. Good mechanics, Nate, good mechanics. There we go, we got a little coach communication going there. We got a couple smiles going, so it looks like we're establishing some rapport with the coach. That's cool. There you go, Nate, hand up. There we go, we talked about that. I mean, look at, like, Nate, look at your partner, Bryant, right? He's, these players, some of these players are taller than Bryant. He's down there with the ball. We've got to have our hand up where he can see that hand. If we have it down at our shoulder level, like I told, like the one time where you had it, where I, that's when I told you, he's not, he's probably not even going to see your hand there. So good job. Good job adjusting. Yeah, there was definitely some contact there, and I, I, my, my eyes kind of went ooh too, but I think the ball for the most part was already kind of headed out. He, there was some, yeah, there was, a, he, the, uh, like Pam said, the, the white player was losing control. They were already kind of jostling out of bounds. The contact didn't create that issue. And there wasn't enough that it's like totally displaced and put them on. Great, great. That's a great get. Great get, Nate. Whoa, 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 what are we? Oh yeah, that's right. Trail, uh, yep, yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Bryant, nice wide look at that. Good job. You were wide. Ball kind of came down in there. Rather than stepping in while the play is going on, you had an angle and you held it. And it just looks solid. You had a good angle. You saw the play. Play finishes. Boom. Whistle. Got it. Three minutes and it's 28 to 13 white. Back by 10. That was great. I mean, he's inside a couple guys there. And... Okay. Uh, Pam mentioned make sure as a lead, even if we know we're going to rotate, let's. 
Let's have our uh, let's have the ball get to the front court and let our trail get to the front court before we initiate that rotation. We can take a look back at the, the last time the ball was on this end. We had this contact up here near the free throw line. Uh, the defense ended up going to the floor. I kind of like the fact that we had a no call there. The defense kind of created the contact. They weren't, they weren't, if there was gonna be a foul there, it would have been on the defense. But the defense created the illegal contact. They're the ones who went to the floor and it never really interrupted the, the flow of the offensive player. So I like the no call there. Okay, I wasn't watching the play. I don't know if Pam saw it. So take a look back at that. Just to me, I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't a foul, but just look back. And then we had a foul on purple five. Who was in control of the ball at the time? Purple. So it can't be just a push. It has to be a team control foul. Because if we just call push, common foul tells us that the other team's in the bonus. But because they were in team control, it's like, Post. It's a team control foul, so call it team control. If you need to give a secondary signal to, to let the coach know what the problem was, fine. But that is a team control foul. Coach, it was, it was, you know, we got purple five, team control foul with a push. Okay, so we're winding down here. The C, remember, college mechanics, C has the clock. So we'll see if we communicate that properly. We're down to 36 seconds. Good look, Nate. I was just gonna admit, I was just gonna suggest don't get too low, but when that shot went up, you had, the, you had a great look. I mean, you're looking right between, like Pam says, four hands, four knees, four feet, you saw it all. Okay, eight seconds. Good job, Nate's got it, good. All right.
they had a front. Oh, I, uh, I'm sorry, I was looking away for a second. And uh, So Pam with, uh, had a lot of great comments here. That was a good call. We ended up having a secondary whistle, but there was cadence. There was primary whistle, pause, secondary whistle. So good job. Handled very well based on all the mechanics. You got to get Brian to that there. Good job, Brian. More towards the sideline. Good adjustment. I think you're going to find that your your angle is so much better when you're closer to that sideline. I mean, you just you're going to see so much more. Good, good. I like it. Balls across. Definitely a step on. Yes, much, much nicer, Brian. Good job. Excellent, excellent. Whistle out of your mouth, Brian, right away. Good hustle, great patience. Just, I mean, it looked, it was solid. Obviously it was a foul, right? We had to get it. It was an obvious foul, but it was just, I just, you looked good making that call. Again, just a reminder, I'd still like to see you crack the whistle, boom. Whistle out of your mouth, because you may have to say something to the players right away. You you know, they won, if there's a uh, uh, stare down or something, you have to be ready to uh, dead ball officiate, and we can't dead ball officiate with a whistle in our mouth. Good job, Fritz, sticking in as a C, rebounding uh, coverage, good job. Nice, Bryant, bouncing the ball across. Looking good, looking good, guys. We had just really, really nice defensive hot stove touch on the top here. It was hand on, off, quick hot stove, great. Great defense. Good job, good job. Way to stay on the play, Fritz. You guys are looking solid. You guys are rocking the stripes this game. Nice job. He's a nice shooter from the outside. I saw him hit some threes yesterday, and he just got a nice, smooth shot for a taller young man. Good call. Purple four definitely undercut him. White 41 goes straight up to get the ball and purple moved underneath him and didn't allow him to come back down. Good call, Nate.
they make him have like one foul call in the first half of the game. Today he's already up to five. minutes to play 44 to 23. Way to recognize that. Way to be on it, Bryant. little thing, it might be something you want to try, Nate. So you were in a close down, ball came out, you, you widened your stance as lead, which is good, but rather than turning and walking, just try just try maybe a sidestep. Because then that way you're, you know, you can, we talk, Mark talked about it yesterday a little bit. We talked about our head being like on a tripod, right? Where we don't want to lean and we don't want to change that level angle. Kind of the same thing, I, I mean, whatever works better for you, but, you know, give it a try maybe. Try just like shuffling or maybe take a quick hop, 
rather than turning and walking two steps. Now if the ball kicks back the other way, now you got to turn 180 degrees to go back the other way. <clears throat> Good rotation, good rotation, close down, good. Wait a step. Brian, I like your I like your decision not to rotate there. Ball came across. I know you were thinking about it because the ball went back, but you paused a second and it it was perfect because the ball went out. He took a look, didn't have anything, boom, it came right back to the inside. You were right in a great position to make a call if there needed to be one. Which there wasn't. You had you had a great look at it. Good patience, Bryant. Yep. I, you know that I, I think you're doing a great job there. Could you have come across? Yeah. Travel. Extended his vision that had that play happen in his primary area. So he extended his vision up. That was obviously a potential competitive matchup, which it ended up being a competitive matchup because of the back screen. That play right there, I'm not saying it was or wasn't. I've got a bad angle. I'll admit to that right now. Bryant, you got a better angle than me. Take a look back at that play, uh, each of you, when you get a chance. So the defender comes across, or the defender on that play, or Bryant to the block, the defender is there. You need to determine did that defender establish legal guard position. And there was a big enough pause there where I'd have to say yes, they did, because the ball handler kind of came up to him, bumped him, then it just kind of died for like a you know a second, second and a half. And all I want to know is, because I can't tell from here, did the defender move to stay in the path of the ball handler? Or did the ball handler push their way kind of through the defender to try to get around along the baseline? If the defender did not move and the offense was trying to get around them, we got to put that in the offense, because that the contact put the defender to the floor.
Um, so I would have to ask why, unless um, something goes all. So I'm not sure that we'll remember what I'll say it here. So Fritz just gave us a good example of that, of, of running with his head over his shoulder. He probably picked up the fact that Nate couldn't get down there, so he uh, went and got that foul. on the clock. Guys, great job of calling, uh, contacting the ball handler in this game, ball handler, dribbler. We've got, we got on it right away. They weren't iffy calls. They were calls by the rule book and we've stayed with it the entire game. So good job. Probably of the games I've watched that I've clinician, this one, uh-oh, we got a violation. Good, good. Good eye communication between Fritz and Nate. You know, Nate probably had it anyway, but Fritz kind of looked over like, hey, we got it, yep. So Nate, we had the, we had the delayed uh, violation. Nate, second shot, we need to have our hand up as a C, right? We're chopping the clock in case there's a missed free throw there. enough to say, hey, one, hands off, which I think was great, preventive officiating that spot. And he didn't want to listen to you, and you could have got him for jamming him with the knee. 
Um, he was, like you said, you had a, he had an extended arm. He was kind of pushing. From a signal standpoint, that call, um, when it's on a defensive player against a player that doesn't have the ball, we probably want to report that as a push because our our signal here that's an extended arm bar, and that's typically a, a contact on the ball handler, ball or ball handler dribbler is an extended bar. Okay, minute 24, 56 to 37. Good job, Fritz. Way to pick up the two-point shot. Definitely had a foot on the line. Did Brian go travel or somebody else? I heard somebody else travel. Brian, I'm hoping it was you. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt and saying it was you. I hope it was. I did hear travel. Good job, gang. Good job. Good job. Way to rock the stripes this game.